Programmers are stupid. The thing is, the good ones already know this. To be a good programmer, you kind of have to realize you're stupid. Now, before you dislike the video and click away, hear me out on this one. Let me know if this sounds like you. When you first started coding, you sucked at it. You knew nothing, your confidence was low, you knew you sucked at it, but you kept doing it anyways. Maybe it was the way the syntax made you feel or that excitement you had when you first printed out Hello World. Either way, for whatever reason, you stuck with it. After many errors and after many stressful encounters, things start to finally click. Eventually, after weeks or maybe months, you create your first project with code. Maybe that's just a simple tic-tac-toe game, or maybe it's a website made with CSS and HTML. Your confidence has rapidly increased, and you start to think, this really ain't that bad. Then you want to take your website to the next level. Maybe you want to add a button to your website that orders Taco Bell on demand. For whatever reason, you just can't get enough of those Crunchwrap Supremes. So you research it, and you discover JavaScript. That's how you're going to interact with your button. And to order from Taco Bell, you need to use something called a REST API. What does that even mean? Then you learn about web requests, callbacks, functions, variables, memory, optimization. A few weeks or even a few months pass by and then one day you realize, holy shit, I don't know anything. It's a bit overwhelming at first. After all, not too long ago you were feeling great. And you've quickly descended into this valley of despair almost where you realize that in fact, you know nothing. That you were once naive to all the possibilities out there and now you realize that. It's actually good you realize that. Some might even say that you are on top of Mount Stupid, as it relates to the phenomenon known as the Dunning-Kruger effect. If we were to graph out your knowledge to confidence ratio, this is what it would look like to be on top of Mount Stupid. But you've quickly descended into this valley of despair, so to speak, the more you've learned about coding. The good news here is that it doesn't stop at the valley of despair. Once you realize that you're stupid as it relates to coding, and in fact you know nothing, you will slowly become more enlightened over the course of your career. Maybe you've already been to the peak of Mount Stupid. Or maybe you're there right now. Looking back on my career, my peak of Mount Stupid was right before starting my first dev internship. I'd been working on my own projects, watching tutorials, doing reading, everything I could to prepare me for this internship, and overall, I felt pretty good. I'd made a few websites, made a few projects in Java, and I honestly thought in my head that programming was easy. I was living high on Mount Stupid. And when I first started my job, they threw me some softballs. Then all of a sudden, SQL queries, PHP scripts, native mobile projects. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the real world hit me. I was learning a lot, but I quickly realized that the more I learned, the more that I didn't know an epiphany that all programmers have at some point. I quickly descended into this valley of despair, and maybe this is where imposter syndrome was first fostered inside of me. And not gonna lie, it was a scary place. It's when I first doubted myself and I first felt like, oh shit, what did I get myself into? But the more I stuck with coding, the more I realized it's like being in a relationship. This is when the honeymoon phase is over, when you're in this valley of despair. This is when you need to figure out if you're in it for the long run till death do you part. Or you end the relationship there and you find someone better for you. Or in this case, a career that's better for you. I decided that I was in it for the long run. Now I say all good programmers have to realize they're stupid. What I mean by that is stupid to all the possibilities out there as it relates to programming. The more you learn about your craft, the more you realize you just don't know anything. It's a very enlightening journey. So what do you do when you reach this low, when the honeymoon phase is over and you've decided that you're gonna stick this relationship with programming out? Well, you go to couples counseling. You start working on the relationship one day at a time, one line of code at a time. Slowly but surely, you'll reach a level of stability where you understand it's impossible to know everything. And that's okay. It's actually good that you've come to that realization. With all the tech out there, the frameworks, the jargon, you can't possibly know everything. And when someone asks you if you've heard about a random framework in this vast sea of never-ending frameworks, you finally feel comfortable saying, I have it. Deep down knowing that you can figure it out and that it probably isn't that hard. And that's the thing about tech. You don't learn everything, but you learn how to learn. You learn how to solve when the time comes. You learn to be comfortable in the unknown. It's a very enlightening journey. Now there will be days where you and programming bicker and you fight and you really feel like couples counseling just isn't working out for you. Ups and downs, 
highs and lows. But notice the trend. With every step backwards, you're taking two steps forward. The relationship seems unstable, but in reality, you're slowly moving up. Couples counseling is, in fact, working out for you. The days that suck are outweighed by the days that are awesome. It's a fun journey on this slope upwards. You're living. And one day, you will be that go-to guy, that tech guru that everyone looks up to, one line of code at a time.